Hi, this is Bradley Bush. Today we're talking about real numbers. Real numbers are a set of numbers in the number system, and this is a classic topic in algebra. Uh, first of all, I have to get this out of the way. Mathematicians really like symbols. So these things right here, for example, this R with kind of a larger left side, that is a symbol that represents the real numbers. And for all of the real numbers, we have different symbols that represent all of them. So we'll go over those as we go through. But I just wanted to point that out. Also, the real numbers are not in a vacuum by itself. They are a part of a larger system. That larger system is called the complex numbers. We won't talk about the complex numbers here except for to mention them. But the complex numbers are everything that you have learned about in algebra. They, can, they are everything, every number that you have dealt with comes from the complex numbers. Complex numbers are either real or they are imaginary. Just to give you a big picture of how things are, are connected. That's how it is. The complex numbers breaks down into the real and imaginary. Let's talk about the real. So the real numbers breaks down into two separate groups, the rational and the irrational. The irrational are uh, numbers that are kind of strange. Well, they're unique. Let's say like pi and e and square root of 2. They have decimals that do not either repeat or end. So if it's a real number and it's not irrational, that means it has to be rational. And rational is kind of as a special group because it takes up this entire left side of the grid here. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction of integers. So say 3 fourths, negative 1 half, 3 over 8, any number that can be written as a fraction of two integers. Well, what is an integer? Well, if you go down from rational numbers, the next subgroup is integers. And integers are numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and little dot, dot, dots I have on the end I mean go to the right and to the left forever. Inside the integers, we have the whole numbers. And again, there's a symbol for the whole numbers, just like there was for the integers and the rationals. I forgot to mention all of those, so let me do that quickly now. The irrational numbers, we have this large or thick I. The rational numbers, we have this thick Q. The integers have a thick Z as their symbol and the whole numbers have a thick w. Whole numbers are integers but without the negatives. So they include 0, 1, 2, 3, and up. Natural numbers are the next subgroup and they drop off the 0 and just have 1, 2, 3, and on up. Oftentimes these natural numbers are also called counting numbers because you count with natural numbers. And there is a symbol for that. It's a N with kind of a thick center. So that's it. There's a the breakdown on the real numbers. So if you ever hear someone talk about real numbers, there, there's actually a meaning to that, and this is it. Next, let's move on to properties of real numbers. <laughs> so real numbers have properties. The reasons that you can do things you can with real numbers. And if you ever get stuck with a problem you're doing in math, it's very likely that if you go back to the properties, you'll be able to come up with an answer. They're very, very helpful. So the first rule is A plus B equals B plus A. That seems pretty trivial. It's called the commutative property of addition. Really what it's saying is 2 plus 3 
is the same thing as 3 plus 2 and 2 plus 3 we can easily see is 5 and 3 plus 2 is 5 so it checks out 5 does equals 5 so it doesn't matter if you add things for what something if you add 2 you have 2 first and you add 3 to it or you have 3 first and you add 2 to it these actually become helpful as you're doing algebraic manipulations the second rule is a times b equals b times a. This is the commutative property of multiplication. It's similar to number one, but this deals with multiplication instead of addition. So it just says two times three is the same thing as three times two. It doesn't matter which order you place them inside of the multiplication. So two times three is six, and three times two is six. So we see that checks out. It's the same thing. Third property is the associative property of addition. What it means is you can group, if you have three things added together or more, you can group uh, them however you want, meaning in this case, we can actually group the first two, add those together and then add the C later, or we can group the second two and add them together and then add the first one later. It doesn't really matter. In our example, we have one plus two grouped together and then we have the three later so one plus two is three that gives us three plus three or if we do it the other way add two and three first that gives us five and we have one still here three and three give us six one and five give us six checks out six does equal six there's uh, a similar rule for multiplication if you're multiplying two thing three two or more things together doesn't matter how you group them um, as we see here, you can group the first two together and then multiply C after, or you can multiply the, the second two together first and then multiply the A afterwards. So in our example, if we have two times three times four, but we group them and do the two times three first, this gives us six times four, or if we group the three and the four first, that gives us 2 times 12, 6 times 4 is 24, and 2 times 12 is 24, so it checks out. 24 does equal 24, so it didn't matter which, uh, which order we group them. Uh, we have a distributive property here. This is called the distributive property of multiplication over addition. It's kind of a long name. You can just remember distribution. So we distribute the A to each of the B and the C. So you can see there's an A there and an A there. So if we distribute this two in our example to the X and the three, we get two times X plus two times three. That gives us two X plus six. Four more properties here. We'll go through them pretty quickly. The first one of the last four, uh, which is number six, a plus zero equals a. A is just any any number. Uh, all this means is that anything added to a zero is just itself. So for example, six plus zero just is six. The additive property of multiplication is similar, but we use one. Anything times one is just itself. So six times one is just six. Inverse property of addition is number eight. If you take any number and add to it its additive inverse, you get zero. So in other words, three plus negative three is the same as just three minus three, which gives you zero. So here, the negative three is the additive inverse. Of three. So you take whatever it is, you change the sign so it's negative, it becomes positive, if it's positive, it becomes negative. Our last rule deals with the inverse property of multiplication. So it's similar, but we're dealing with multiplication. So the additive inverse of a, 
excuse me, the multiplicative inverse of a is 1 over a. So this right here is the multiplicative inverse of a. So anything times its multiplicative inverse is just 1. So in our example, we have 4 times 1 over 4, which gives us 4 over 4, which gives us 1. And just a note here, um, a can't be 0 because you can't have 0 in the denominator. I hope this was helpful with some properties uh, and explanation of what the real numbers are. Thanks for watching.